Hi there. So uh, my name is Heath Ross. I am the tech sales coordinator here at Isomatic. Um, that basically means I'm like a liaison between the sales and marketing department and the engineering department. Um, so more simply put, I know a little bit about a lot. And today I'm going to try to talk to you guys a little bit about some of our technology here at Isomatic. Um, it looks like we have a little bit of a small group. So feel free to chime in, um, unmute yourselves if you'd like to ask a question or throw it in the chat. Um, and I'll do my best to answer uh, all of your questions. So what we're gonna do is I'm actually gonna uh, touch on a handful of things today. Two are gonna be revamped existing technologies here at Isomatic. And, uh, and then we're gonna talk about a couple of brand new latest and greatest uh, technologies from Isomatic. Actually an inlet and an outlet here and here. And it's moving air via a tiny silent fan. And it moves that air over this bulb. It's a UVC bulb. Um, and what that does, it, it generates a, a, a plasma, um, some of which is uh, ozone gas, and it sterilizes anything that it comes into contact with. Now it's a passive process, and it's extremely safe for consumers um, in the sense that, you know, you, some people may ask like, is it okay to breathe this stuff in? Well, in high quantities, not necessarily. In this capacity, it's totally, totally safe and it dissipates rapidly. So this actual unit here would get installed on the left-hand side of an elevation series machine. Reed, if you don't mind um, switching me to that camera angle. So, elevation series ice machine. Easiest ice machine to clean in the industry. Pairing that with the safe ice technology, cleanest and easiest to clean, it's a win-win. Um, two screws, many of you have probably seen uh, the disassembly and how to clean the food zone of these machines, so I'm gonna kind of skip over that. But, cliff notes, two screws at the bottom, pop this panel off, you're straight into the front-facing evaporator. We have these front-facing evaporators from 300 to 2,000 pounds, our entire line uh, of cubers as a front facing evaporator. Um, and these panels on the side and top are easily removable after that, that front panel is off. So you just lift up the top and normally we'd be going to the other side and I'd be discussing commonality of parts and things along those lines. Today we're gonna to come to the left side. This left panel here pops right off. And the safe ice unit lives right here in this machine space. So in this cavity here, it lives right here and it routes with rubber tubes to insert into the evaporator plate right here, okay? Um, now, the reason that it's easy to retrofit is the plastic surrounds we updated um, on the side of the evaporators. So any machine manufactured after the 1st of January has these simple little dimple cutouts. I can actually show those on this camera if you don't mind, Reed. So, let's see, these tiny little cutouts, um, it's a thinner plastic. You can pop that out with a screwdriver and you're ready to go setting up your safe, safe ice kit. Um, you don't mind switching me back. So that's kind of uh, the gist of, of installation. Um, you're probably wondering uh, for the field install, um, if what the cost is, there's a cost difference between field or factory. It's the exact same price. If you order the kit for a retroactive field install, it's $695 list. And if you add it on to your machine, which changes your model name of the machine by an S, it puts an S at the end of the name, um, it's $695 added to list. Um, and that bulb that I was showing you is an annual replacement. Um, so super simple. We're talking about a program um, for uh, automatically updating people when they need to replace their bulbs. There is a light that shows up on the side of the safe ice unit in this little window right here. And this light will tell you if your bulb is out. You can also tell yourself because it glows purple. It is uh, it's quite obvious when your safe ice unit is running, when you have the front panel off. No one would know otherwise. Um, although you may want a lot of people to know because it is a great advertising point and, and something you can point to as a step that your establishment has made um, in terms of providing a safe dining experience. So is, are there any questions about the safe ice technology? Did I miss anything? Um, if you don't mind read. Looks like Shannon's speaking. Maybe on a different phone call. 
<laughs> Don't worry, Shannon. Ryan Zoster. Okay. So, uh, so the, the, I'm sorry, what was the cost of the replacement bulb? The cost of the repla replacement bulb is 70 to list. 70 list. 70 list. Thank you. Which machines will that be available on? All 30 and 48 inch CIM machines. And we are working on getting it available for the 22 inch machines. Um, it's, as you can see, the space that we have installed it on is this, this side cavity here, this, this space here to the side of the evaporator. And we have a lot of commonality of parts. So our 22 inch evaporators are the same width. Um, so there's a little bit less space if we shrink this machine machine head in. Um, so we're, we're working on getting a smaller model um, that can be more universal to our entire product line. Um, but fortunately, most machines we have are 30 inches. So we should be able to get it uh, up and running in a lot of locations. And we have a lot of chains that are expressing interest right now. Do the 22 inch models currently have the wiring already in place for that? Yes, they do. Yes, they do. So this box right here is the electrical connection box. Um, and there are open terminals that are perfectly available uh, for connecting the machine. And it's basically like, it's not a Molex, but it's a, it's a blade connector. It's really quick. Yeah, throw me that read. So it's Molex on one side, blade connectors on the other. The blade connectors uh, with the instructions that come with it uh, very easily connect to power for the machine. We do recommend a technician installs it. So if you do do the field installed version, uh, of course, you, some of these machines are high voltage. We recommend always doing it with a technician, but it is fairly easy to do and the layman can pull it off. Any other safe ice questions? Can you use that along with ozone? It, it, it does generate ozone. This does generate ozone. So this is actually, in, it's ozone and UV in combination? Is that correct? So it's, it's to be clear, it's, it's using UV light to generate a uh, photoplasm that is uh, comprised right. of ozone amongst other things. Yeah. Gas, it's a gas that, that used correct. It. Um, to it propagates down into the bin, fills up from the bottom, and ultimately will come up into the machine deck because it is heavier than air. And the way we set our inlet and outlet, we set the outlet below uh, the inlet, so it flows out and down, and before it comes all the way back up, and it, that makes sense. So it, it generates an ozone gas um, amongst some other gases. And I actually do have an ozone expert here that used to work at a winery, so he's. <laughs> Do you have something you want to add, Reed? Um, you can talk about yeast as a Yeast. Yeah, so uh, it, it inhibits the growth of yeast. So if your, your, your breweries, your bakeries, um, anywhere where there's, there's a lot of flour in the air or where yeast being used, uh, it will dramatically help prevent mold. And, you know, some places, I heard about a place down uh, in lower Alabama, which is where I'm from, um, and we're going to be uh, outfitting them with, with one of our earliest safe ice units because uh, they're having to go back every two to three weeks to clean mold out of a bin. And we're actually gonna use that as a use case for a video advertising. We know it's gonna work, but we gotta get that content first. So, um, yeah. So I'm gonna move on from the safe ice. Uh, feel free to ask me to come back to it if anybody has any questions about it. Um, I don't wanna take too much of everyone's time today. Uh, one thing that I do want to point out, though, if you attended this and you attend our cocktail hour at three o'clock today, you'll be in the running to win one of these bad boys. Uh, but this will be a UCG 60. So fantastic machines. I want one for my own man cave. Um, so I hope to see your faces again later today. I'll be hosting that, uh, showing you guys how to make a few cocktails. Um, the next new technology that I want to speak to, and I want to go through this rather quickly, but I will say, um, if somebody does have it in them to download our app and, uh, and sit, email me a screenshot, heath.ross at isomatic, I'll send you a prize. Um, I'd like to see as many downloads on this app as possible, but I'm gonna do a quick screen share. The isomatic mobile app, as it is today, it's an ongoing process, but as it is today, is the ultimate technician's tool for our machines. Um, it's industry leading, and I wanna show you a few features on it and then speak a little bit to how it's gonna grow in the future. So give me just a moment here and I'll have my phone shared on the screen. So you guys should be able to see it. Eight, four, two, 
four six six. All right, here we go. So in the bottom left down here, you see IOM with the blue button ice cube logo. So I'm going to hit that. I'm actually going to return to the main page. This is the screen you see when you fire up our mobile app. And uh, you see scan, search by serial number, and search by model. This is a free feature. That's the way I like to talk about it as it is right now. Ultimately, it can become a sales tool, but this is a feature for our ice machines. If you're selling our ice machines, technicians are, uh, th this is a technician's tool and that makes it more sellable. It's, it's a feature to um, advance the maintenance of these machines. Um, so the first thing that I'm gonna point to is uh, the scan feature. All of our ice machines have a QR code on the side of the machine. I'm actually gonna be able to scan this, this QR code without pulling this panel off. It's just the front panel. So I'm gonna hold in here like this and it'll pick it up. Boom. Now we have all the information populated for our ice machine. Manufacturer date, serial number. Um, you know, it is all of the information that is relevant to the machine that, that lives in that QR code is available just with a quick scan which makes it useful to end users as well as technicians. If you need to know, oh, I don't know, is it in warranty? Well, scan that and then hit the warranty plus button in the bottom right. And what that does is it opens up our warranty webpage, okay? And you copy the serial number into there and you're good to go. There's actually a serial number copy button right here. So you don't have to actually type that in. You open the warranty page and paste that serial number right in. And we'll check and see if this machine, this one's invalid because we never shipped it. It stayed at the factory. Uh, but most machines will give you information there. The next important resource here is the resources button. So we're talking about manuals, uh, service installation manuals, um, parts manuals. So if you need to know what parts are for which machine, all of this lives with each model and serial number in our system. Um, and we're also going to have Oh, here we go, videos as well. So you guys may have seen Brittany over there in the corner. I'm just kind of skip through this, but this is Brittany explaining how to take apart the food zone. This lives on our app. Final thing I want to touch on here is the troubleshooting feature. Ice machines have errors. They, they're electrical, plumbing, HVAC. It kind of touches on a lot of different trades all at once. And while I like to think ours are some of the most reliable in the industry, they do have problems and ours tell you when they're having a problem from the LED lights in the front of the screen. You hit enable animations, it will tell you what your error code is. And this is why it is the best technician's tool in the industry because it gives you a workflow. If I select one of these issues that corresponds to the lights on the front of the machine, is water onto the ice maker? Yes. Is the incoming water pressure between 20 and 80 PSI? Yes, I'm actually not telling the truth. This machine doesn't have water to it right now. Um, it's water coming into the trough. Yes. I'm gonna click through it. Oh, it took me all the way through really quickly. So at the end there, if the workflow doesn't give you the solution for the part to be replaced, it, helps, it gives you the contact information to get in touch with the factory and get on the phone with our experts so that they can help you out. Um, it's really a fantastic tool in that regard. So I did say I was almost done with this, but there's a few features on here. Contact us, feedback um, from the scan search connect page. Say you don't have the serial number, say you're in the truck on the way. Um, search by model populates with all of our machine models and you have all the same resources from there. Um, now what's the future look like for this app? I'm gonna stop the screen share, um, but ultimately, there's going to be a slider on the front of the app that will, um, that will say sales or technicians. Because we want to make this not just an isomatic technicians app, we want to make this the end all be all isomatic app. Um, so there will be sales tools that will be separated by ice types um, and, and help you get the exact machine uh, for your customer that you're looking to get. So that's coming down the pipeline, it's not here yet. The other super secret sneak peek is that Ultimately, uh, these machines will be able to do live diagnostics via Bluetooth from this application. So you wanna know what's going on with the machine, stand next to it with your phone. Yeah, and it'll tell you, is it freezing? How long a time has it been clean? How long has it been since it's been clean? Uh, all types of information like that. 
An even bigger picture than that, IoT connectivity, where say hypothetically you're a hotel, you can look at all four of your ice machines, one on each floor and see what's going on with each one and get a, potentially even get a notification and that when it goes down. I don't wanna to make too many promises right off the bat, but we are working down that road and that is our ultimate goal to be starting with the easiest to clean, easiest to work on, easiest to service, and then ultimately easiest to own, which should make it very easy to sell. So I'm gonna move on from that. Um, do I have any questions about the app at all or any ideas? Yes, like I, I have, said, it's a work in progress. I have a question. Hey, yeah, shoot. Uh, the question is, uh, somebody has a newer style machine. I've got an app on my phone. End user yeah. has a problem. Can, you know, without having to explain to them or a technician, can I have them send a photo um, of, the, uh, of the code that I can then analyze myself? Yes, absolutely. So um, the QR code, if you, know, if you know the model right after that, you can select it from the model options. But if somebody sends you a picture of the QR code, you can open QR codes from pictures as, as long as the picture is high in quality. Um, and uh, you'll be able to see what's going on. So, Perfect, thank you. Hey, you're welcome. Anybody else? Okay, I'm gonna move on really quickly. Uh, I wanna talk about Pearl Ice. The first segue into talking about Pearl Ice is um, a very quick tutorial about this machine right here. Reed, if you could bring the camera in on me. Um, basically, uh, this is the facelifted version of the old Gen D270. This is the Gen D270 A2. Now this machine is a um, hands-free ice and water dispenser. Some of you are probably uh, quite familiar with it and its, and its predecessor. Um, this one is stainless steel, it's rugged, um, and it produces 270 pounds of ice in 24 hours. The programmability of it is what I really want to touch on here, because this is a uh, technologically based uh, presentation. And essentially what you have here is ice. These, these are four buttons, by the way. Um, ice, ice and water, water, and a pitcher setting. Now, a lot of people didn't even know this. Some people own the older machines and don't know it about those. But these, this new one is, it is a little bit more behavior. It does, it does behave a little bit better. But essentially what you do is you can press and hold any one of these settings. So if I press and hold for five seconds on ice and water, what will happen is this light down here will change. And now it is purely an ice and water dispenser as opposed to the ice dispenser that you saw previously. So this machine will um, stay in this, in this setting indefinitely. So what does that mean? Now you have, a, it's an infrared sensor down here. So you have an infrared sensing completely touch-free ice dispensing machine um, or ice and water. Um, now, how does the dispensing work? It, it is the, these infrared dispensers, these infrared sensors down here that control the dispensing, um, but there is a dispense time that gets set. So if you wanted to change the dispensing time, I'm hoping we can see this for 10 seconds, if you press and hold the pitcher button here, all four lights are gonna flash. Um, and when they flash, I can then select the first, second, third, there we go. So they're all on. I can now select um, three seconds, five seconds, 10 seconds, or 15 seconds for the dispensing time. Um, so what that means is uh, that's the maximum amount of time that it will dispense. Um, if you were to have it set for 15 seconds and pull your glass away, then it's, it will stop. It's not just gonna keep running for that amount of time. Um, so yeah. That is uh, our ice and water dispenser, the Gym D270A2. Um, we have this style of ice machine. This is the Pearl Ice, by the way. Um, it's our true chewable ice. It is a compressed flake ice. It's, it's small, um, but it, it is porous and it has a lot of displacement. If you attended the coffee and cocktails presentation this morning, you would have seen that, that uh, it, it will melt more. It has a higher melt rate. App downloaded and email sent. Heck yeah, you're getting, you're getting a swag bag. Awesome, Melissa. Thank you for that. <laughs> um, so yeah, we have these machines up to 2,000 pounds on a 30 footprint, footprint, which is what we have up here. We don't know if you can steer my camera up here, but um, the gym and MFI machines, we have in equivalent productions. They just have a different breaker head. This machine up here is what we call the Pearl Storm. It's becoming the spec for a lot of major uh, chains. Um, and essentially it produces 2000 pounds in 24 hours on a 30 inch platform. Nobody else does that. It's super easy to sell with that fact alone. 
Now, there's another factor, um, which I would mention that we did some upgrading, um, and I wanted to show you guys that factor right now. The bearing, the auger bearing that the breaker head, that lives inside this breaker head. Reed, if you can switch to this one. The Gem and MFI machines use a, a breaker head to, um, to extrude ice. It's a continuous ice machine. So this auger spins inside the evaporator. Okay, so it spins vertically inside the evaporator and pushes ice up and out of these little holes right here, okay? Now, all the weight of this auger lives on this bearing on the top of it, okay, inside of this sealed breaker head. Now, in the past, for us and our competitors, you would have needed to grease your bearing. Here's an old style, style bearing. You would have needed to grease your bearing every six months at minimum to maintain the quality of the machine. If you don't maintain that bearing, it can get the, uh, the auger running like this as opposed to just spinning and it can damage your evaporator and it's a full download. So that's no good. So what we did is we created a new bearing which has an oil injected polymer in it. And what we've discovered is this bearing will last the lifetime of the machine. The one that I'm holding in my hands right here ran in a machine for an entire year, nonstop. So that is a huge selling point for these machines and why I consider them one of the most reliable ice machines on the market. Do we have any questions about that? We're kind of running over on time here. Shannon? Do, can you put the replacement bearing in an older unit that does not have a sealed bearing? Yes. Yes. Excellent. Excellent. Some of you know me. I see a lot of familiar faces, familiar names up there. Um, if you're if you're back for yet another show, thank you. Uh, we're having a good time uh, explaining our, our product line and um, and just kind of doing this virtual NRA show here at Isomatic. Uh, this segment is uh, technology focused. My name is Heath Ross, and I'm the tech sales coordinator uh, here at Isomatic. And um, I'm just going to guys kind of show you guys a few things um, that are some new technologies today. But I'm actually going to start today with. Um, and we're going to keep this pretty short, but I'm going to start it, start it with a brief explanation of how ice machines work, how they make ice. Um, a lot of people don't know it. Everybody uses ice. It's ubiquitous. And a lot of people take that process for granted and don't know. Um, so I'm actually going to ask Brittany to come on with me. And from there, I'm going to transition uh, from after my quick explanation of the refrigeration cycle. I'm going to transition into explaining why our machines are extremely easy. To explain. This is Brittany Stanley. Um, She's uh, your favorite salesperson here at Isomatic. So, uh, Brittany has a doodle, a drawing that I did uh, earlier today. So, forgive my penmanship. <laughs> Is this a uh, show and read? Yeah. So, basically, the way that ice machines work is compressing gas. So, PV equals NRT is, is the, is the uh, pressure uh, temperature formula that allows us to make things cold. Um, but the reality is we don't actually make things cold. We just transfer heat. Uh, cold isn't really a thing. It's just the absence of heat. So what we do is we start with a compressor. So this is my compressor drawing right here. What the compressor does is it runs pistons up and down and it pushes gas to be high pressure gas. This is why it says HPH right here, high pressure gas or HPG, sorry, high pressure gas. Um, and what, where that goes through our copper tubing uh, into a condenser. So that condenser could be a water cool condenser. It could be a remote condenser on the roof, which is what I tried to draw here. Um, or it could be an air cooled condenser on the back of the machine if it's a self-contained machine. So the condenser uh, literally condensates. It turns that high pressure gas into a high pressure liquid. Um, and that liquid uh, travels from the condenser to our expansion valves. Uh, so we use a thermal expansion valve, um, which changes how much uh, how much gas it allows to come through it based on temperatures. Um, but you see that I drew a little canister here. Um, any, do we have the, uh, an aerosol can around? Ah, this is so, <laughs> so cooling concept, this. When you spray an aerosol can of any kind, it gets cold. That's what's happening here. It's an expansion. Everybody knows, oh man, the, the can of paint is cold or whatever it is you're doing. 
it gets cold. So that's what's happening to the expansion valve. So now we are going from a high pressure liquid to a low pressure liquid. And that low pressure liquid brings us all the way to the evaporator. And this is the piece de resistance. The low pressure liquid goes to our evaporators and the evaporators uh, can be thought of as the heat absorber. So this is a, um, where we are absorbing heat out of water in terms of ice machines. So our evaporators um, are what kind of set us apart in the industry. Um, all of our Cuber evaporators are front facing and um, our continuous ice machines like our GM and MFI series are easily accessible. So what that means is that it's very easy to clean pretty much our entire line of, of, of products. So Brittany, thank you. Um, I hope that doodle kind of explained a little bit of the process. Oh, and what it does from, from the evaporator, the refrigeration, the refrigerant uh, turns back into a gas and then it's compressible again. So then it gets, the cycle just continues. Um, so what I'm going to do is show you guys a couple of evaporators. Like I mentioned, the CIM series is front-facing evaporator. So from behind this plastic right here, and remember, the best way to refer to an evaporator is heat absorber. So it's pulling heat out of the water. We cascade water down this plate. It comes out of this water distribution tube here, and the plate is pulling heat from the water into the refrigerant, which then goes back into the compressor. On the flip side, for a continuous ice machine, this is what it looks like. It's basically the same thing, except for this piece here is, is folded over into a cylindrical tube. So this piece here, as it's obvious here that this is easily accessible from the front. Um, this is where the water goes. So where anywhere water goes, you're going to have uh, potential for mold, uh, any, any yeast in the air. It's, it's where ice machines get dirty. Water is, is, is the culprit, and this is why it's easy for us to clean our machines. Some competitors out there will have evaporators that are running in parallel long ways in the machine, and that does not make them accessible. Sometimes you have to accept, access them from the top of the machine. This is right here, front and center, and that's from 300 pounds up to 2,000 pounds for the CIM machines. For the continuous machines, we come over here. This is a Gen 450, and the evaporator, uh, uh, the brother to what's in my hand, looks right here, front and center. Super easy to clean as well. For these machines, you literally just make ice um, by putting our, your descalers and sanitizers into this float housing, and you make ice to clean. So. Essentially, our entire product line is extremely easy to clean because of the accessibility of our evaporators, um, which is why I wanted to start by kind of showing what that is and why it's important. It's where the actual ice is 